In this video, we're going to be drawing a couple force diagrams and we're going to learn how to break angle forces into their X and Y components. So we're going to go ahead and draw the force diagram on this one over here. So we have the force of gravity straight down because of the pull of the earth. We have the normal force from the ground pushing up perpendicular to support the sled. And then we have a force of tension pulling up on this angle over here. And then we also have the force of kinetic friction that is opposing the slide, assuming that the slide is sliding over to the left. So the one that we're going to be paying attention to is, I didn't even add that FT, is a force of tension right there. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to need an angle over here. So if you're given a problem, you're probably going to get some kind of angle with it. And then you also get some sort of force like 10 newtons to be broken up into components. What you typically want to do is maybe break that triangle out and draw it off to the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an X component because if it's going up to this left corner over here, then we have an X component, which I'll call FTX. And then we also have a Y component which we'll call FTY. Now, basically all we're gonna do is do a little bit of trig with this 30 degree angle, and we're gonna always include the hypotenuse because we wanna use the hypotenuse of 10 Newtons, okay? Now, if we want the opposite end with the hypotenuse, that we're gonna use sine. So we're gonna use the sine of 30 degrees equals opposite, which is our FTY over our hypotenuse, which is 10 Newtons, multiply both sides by 10, 10 times the sine of 30 is five. We're gonna do something very similar for the X component over here, um, except it's adjacent to the 30 degree angle. So adjacent with the hypotenuse, we're gonna to wanna to use the cosine of 30 degrees, and that's gonna equal the FTX over 10. Again, multiply both sides by 10, and then we're going to get an FTY of 8.66 Newtons. Okay, now that is a skill that you're going to want to have handy because when you get farther into force problems, you're going to have to sum up forces along the X and Y axis to figure out what's going on. So the X axis would be everything that is perfectly straight um, horizontally in along this direction. And then the Y direction is anything that is perfectly straight vertically. So obviously that FT fits right in between. So then if you're taking a look at your forces in the X direction, you're gonna grab this um, red force over here, FTX um, of 8.66. And then considering how that interacts with the force of friction. And then for your FTY, you're gonna include that as an upward force with your normal force being opposed by the force of gravity. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. The next one, we still have a force of gravity straight down. And then we have a normal force straight up perpendicular from the surface of the ramp. And then we'll say that the object is maybe at rest. If it's at rest, then it's trying to slide down to the bottom right hand corner and then the force of static friction is going to be opposing that slide. Now for this one, it has some different axes. It has a parallel axis, which goes this way. That's going to be our X, or if you want to call that parallel, here's our parallel symbol. And then we have our perpendicular one over here. So we call that our Y axis, our perpendicular. Okay. The reason why we have a tilted X and Y axis is because mm -hmm by the nature of this surface, nothing is, is actually gonna be moving right or left or up or down, okay? They're just gonna be affected by the surface perpendicularly, which is our y-axis, or it's gonna be sliding along parallel. So that's gonna be sort of like our horizontal direction. With that being said, our FG is sitting in between our x and y-axis, the force of static friction and the normal force are good. So what we would do is we would take the angle of this um, incline and we're going to be able to translate it over. The way we do that is like this. We're going to draw a perpendicular component, which I'll call FGY, 
And then we'll go ahead and draw a horizontal component like this, which is our FGX. Now, we'll run, now what we're gonna do here is pretty similar to what we did on the previous question, except with some slight differences. Uh, now what we have here is we would take the force of gravity first. So say for example, we had a 10 kilogram object, whatever the mass is, you would multiply that by G. So M and G gives you your force of gravity. Well, so we'll say the force of gravity is 98 Newtons. That is our hypotenuse. Okay, now from there, this 30 degree angle actually translates right up here into this right triangle. So now um, what we're going to want to do is if we want this part, the FGY, we're actually going to use cosine this time because that's adjacent to our 30 degree angle and then along with our hypotenuse. So for our FGY um, over our hypotenuse is equal to the cosine of 30 degrees and then multiply both sides by 98 and then we get 84.87. Now for the X component, remember the last time we did end up using cosine, this time you're gonna actually end up using sine because we look opposite of the 30 degrees and that's where the FGX is. So for this one, it's gonna be the opposite over the hypotenuse and that equals the sine of the angle. Again, we'll multiply both sides by 98 Newtons and then we get our FGX of 49 newtons okay so to sum things up um when you want to break things into components you just want to find anything that doesn't sit in your x and y axis most scenarios are going to look like this right here um, because a lot of scenarios aren't on an incline or decline so if anything is not directly vertical or horizontal you want to make sure you do a little bit of trig such as we did over here to break up your sine and cosine or to utilize your sine and cosine to get those X and Y components. If something is on an angle like this, um, you're gonna use the methodology that we did with this triangle over here. And again, use sine and cosine, except our cosine gave us our Y component in this one, and our sine gave us our X component in this one. So you have to be careful with always assuming that sine gives you the Y component and cosine always gives you the X component. Take a quick look at the angle, see what's opposite and adjacent, and then make your decision from there. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.